Hello and welcome to the Monday, April 29th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Okta did release an advisory stating that they are seeing a surge in credential stuffing attacks. Credential stuffing is notoriously difficult to defend against because, well, it uses leaked credentials, so it's not like uh, classic brute forcing where an attacker needs to send lots and lots of requests. It, it requires much less requests than you have something classic brute forcing. Also, Okta states that they observed this credential stuffing originating from anonymizing proxies. There may be a coincident here, but uh, Okta also came out with a feature to block anonymizing proxies. Credential stuffing itself has been an ongoing issue. Cisco alerted of it a month ago. I remember last year, Cisco also released another advisory about these kind of credential stuffing brute force attack. It's definitely something that you need to be ready for. Blocking anonymizing proxies may help a little bit, but in the end, two-factor authentication, or you'll likely fall for it at some point. And police in Japan has come up with an interesting trick to hopefully disrupt some of the sort of small-scale ransomware and help desk scams that are in particular targeting elderly people. What they did is that in convenience stores that uh, often sell uh, gift cards, they did offer specific gift cards that are labeled as uh, virus Trojan horse removal fee payment card or unpaid charges, delinquent charges payment card. So essentially they're labeled in such a way that someone who has been infected by some uh, fake malware or fake anti-malware in some cases may be tempted to buy these cards in order to pay the fee of some kind of help desk scam. Interestingly, this has apparently worked. They have been placed in the stores November and have already uh, stopped several elderly people from actually uh, being scammed. Of course, there's just a very sort of brief uh, note here on Twitter that I'm going by. Apparently there was an article in a Japanese newspaper with a little bit more details. I guess it depends all on sort of what the follow-up is, if police will then help these people remove whatever uh, malware was installed on their systems. But overall, an interesting approach. And Akamai published some interesting data about phishing against the United States Postal Service. Their legitimate domain is usps.com. Many of the phishing domains are using usps.com and then something else uh, added to the domain name in order to make them uh, somewhat look legitimate. Also, often they're advertised via SMS messages. What Akamai did is Akamai, of course, runs some big DNS servers. So they looked at DNS requests that they are seeing for the legitimate USPS.com domain, as well as for the malicious domains. And they collected some data from October last year to the end of February this year with a big spike sort of in November and December for the malicious uh, domains. Over this time frame, they saw pretty much the same number of malicious requests as they saw legitimate requests for USPS.com, suggesting that the uh, all added up, uh, the malicious sites are getting about as much traffic as the legitimate USPS.com site. Something I noted is that uh, a few years ago, when you reported a phishing domain uh, to the United States Postal Service, they tended to be gone pretty quickly. That hasn't really happened uh, these last few months. I'm not sure if part of it is just uh, them being overwhelmed with just a sheer number of different domains that were registered, or maybe also it gets more difficult to actually shut them down. Akamai has more details about uh, which domains they looked at, how they filtered, and you know, some of this may also make a good filter uh, for your network to look for these phishing attempts. 
And last week, uh, Chrome released uh, Chrome 124, and with that, it introduced a new feature allowing for a TLS key exchange that is quantum safe. This has been a big topic recently that uh, various uh, vendors are trying uh, to get ready for a time where uh, quantum computing could be used to break existing uh, cryptographic algorithms. Chrome didn't want to be left behind here, but it looks like uh, this added support may break TLS in some circumstances. As so often, uh, the middle boxes apparently are to blame here. I didn't run to any issues here, but apparently some firewalls and other network devices may have problems with uh, these uh, new uh, TLS uh, modes that were added here. Theoretically, TLS should be sort of backwards compatible, but apparently it's not in this case, at least not in all uh, circumstances. There is some advice now how to turn off this feature in Chrome. I recommend you only really turn it off if it causes you any problems. Well, and this is it for today. In case you are attending RSA in a week, uh, well, we will have our uh, panel again. It's on Wednesday, on Tuesday. Jason Lamb and I, we also uh, do have a learning lab, which is basically a workshop, sort of uh, something more hands-on. Hope to see some of you there. And well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.